Sitting at the back of your throat are your tonsils. They help your body's immune system fight infections. But sometimes these infections can be too overwhelming for your tonsils and they become infected themselves. This condition is called tonsillitis and for some it can even be chronic. Here on MedTalk Health Talk, we'll tell you more about tonsillitis, its symptoms, prevention, treatment options, and when it becomes a serious concern. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez. You're watching CNN Philippines. When you go for a checkup, have you ever wondered what your doctor looks at when they examine your mouth? They look at your tonsils. Our guests are here today to tell us more about this. With us is Dr. Paolo Katindig. He's an ENT head and neck surgeon at the Makati Medical Center. And we're also joined by Dr. Juliet Balderas, a cardiologist and consultant at the Philippine Heart Center. Thank you both for joining us. Tonsils are often perceived to be of little importance, but actually these small organs play a role in protecting our health. So what exactly are your tonsils for? Dr. Paolo, could you please explain? So basically tonsils is part of your lymphatic tissues. It is part of your immune system. When we say tonsils, actually most of us would know that tonsils is the one that we see at the back of our throats. But most of the time, aside from the two palatine tonsils, we have other tonsils as well. It's located at the nasal pharynx, that's what we call the adenoids, two at the eustachian tube, the tubal tonsils, and one at the base of the floor. So basically, these tonsils function for immunity. It enhances our immunity and protects us from any viral or bacterial infections. That's right. So again, as Dr. Paolo mentioned, your tonsils are part of your immune system and part of your body's first line of defense against infections. But when they become infected, then you have tonsillitis. Now, what's also important to note about tonsillitis in general is how often it occurs in a certain time frame. So basically, you have your acute and your chronic tonsillitis. So, unahin muna natin ang acute tonsillitis. Dr. Paolo, pag sinabing acute tonsillitis, anong ibig sabihin nito? So when we say acute tonsillitis, usually it's sudden in onset. Um, patient would experience um, fever, sore throat, dysphagia or dinophagia, cervical lymphadenopathies, and um, sometimes kids would have drooling as symptoms and high grade fever as well. Let's talk about pag sinabing chronic tonsillitis. Bakit ito importante rin malaman? Actually, when we say chronic, it's recurrent. So basically, here in the Philippines, what we follow uh, as our guidelines is if patients would have three to five times in a year of repeated tonsillitis, we usually note that as chronic or recurrent tonsillitis already. And whatever the type of tonsillitis, the symptoms usually remain the same. Dr. Paolo, what are some of these symptoms na common talaga with tonsillitis? They would have high-grade fever. Patient would feel pain when they swallow. They have difficulty in swallowing as well. Some patients would have cervical lymphadenopathies or yung nakakapang mga kulani sa liig ng leeg nila. Then at times when patient would see, syempre ngayon uh, dahil nahihirapan tayo and patient is very, gusto nilang tingnan agad, patient would look at their throat and they would see some white patches or para may mga nana dun sa likod ng lalamunan nila. And those are possible signs and symptoms of tonsillitis. Dr. Juliet, let's remind our viewers, uh, kahit saan tayo pumunta ngayon, there's always a temperature check at the entrance. What does a person uh, with a fever have? Ano yung average temperature nito? The accepted uh, correlation for a true fever, especially na yung may COVID, is a temperature more than 38 degrees. So yan po ang uh, endorsed by Department of Health as a relevant fever for it to be significant. In today's world, if you're feeling sick, a lot of you will immediately think that it might be COVID-19. Hindi naman natin masisisi yung mga tao na mag-alala dahil sa mataas na kaso ng COVID-19 ngayon. Dr. Juliet, could the symptoms of tonsillitis be confused with that of yung mga symptoms ng COVID-19? Yes, of course, kasi we know that the virus stays in the mouth and it's actually the way the reason why it is transmitted and that is the reason why the swab is taken because in covid it's really in the oral pharyngeal in the in the tonsils 
where it stays. That's why you have nasopharynx. Naso, you have a nasopharyngeal swab. So the first thing to think, especially in a pandemic, is is this COVID or not? Yes, and so while tonsillitis and COVID-19 may share some symptoms, there are other symptoms like a swollen tonsil or maybe enlarged lymph nodes that are maybe unique to tonsillitis. Dr. Paolo, do we have to worry about tonsillitis being contagious? And if so, could you explain to us how tonsillitis may be passed on to another person? Actually, in terms of pathogens, still the most common um, pathogen for tonsillitis is what we, the viral infections. So most of the time for kids, um, when mapapansin natin yan, for kids na nagkaroon ng sakit ng lalamunan today, tomorrow the entire family will have it already. So as much as possible, try to practice good hygiene. Try to avoid sharing utensils um, when eating, if ever there are symptoms already. Most cases of tonsillitis are caused by viruses, as Dr. Paolo mentioned. And in fact, up to 70% of the cases are caused by viruses, just like the common cold or the flu. But if your tonsillitis is caused by bacteria, more often than not, it's strep, which causes strep throat. And if this is the case, there are some complications that you might encounter. Dr. Juliet, what are some of these complications? Of course, the complication of strep throat, which is bacterial, is rheumatic fever, which develops in a susceptible host within two weeks after an acute onset of uh, tonsillitis. Bacterial uh, tonsillitis is also uh, highly transmissible. That's why overcrowding is a factor for the increase in uh, rheumatic fever, rheumatic heart disease in the country. So, but we have what you call a susceptible host. So nutrition is very important. The only way to prevent that is completely treat uh, bacterial tonsillitis. So you have to give the antibiotics for uh, at least seven to 10 days. Complete treatment will be the prevention for uh, the other complications in tonsillitis. If you suspect to have tonsillitis, when exactly is the time to see a doctor? We'll discuss this after a short break. Stay with us on MedTalk Health Talk, your partner in healthcare. You're watching CNN Philippines. Welcome back to Med Talk Health Talk. If someone with tonsillitis coughs or sneezes near you and you breathe in those droplets or even if you just touch a contaminated surface, then touch your nose or your mouth, you could develop tonsillitis. Dr. Paolo, what are some of the good hygiene tips we should practice uh, every day? Proper hand washing. So ideally, you use your alcohol every time you go out, but pomazo, or every time you touch something, some surfaces. Please try to practice good hygiene. For now, cover your mouth when you sneeze, when you, when you cough. Um, use your face mask when you go out, um, your face shields when you go out as well. Then to prevent tonsillitis, practice oral hygiene. Um, for example, if you don't have your regular mouthwash at home, you can use actually saline solution. How to prepare it? Prepare one cup of water, lukewarm or warm water, then a teaspoon of rock salt or iodized salt, then just gargle it. Treat at least every after meals, then try to drink a lot of water as well. Very good. Now, these practices will not only reduce your risk of catching tonsillitis, they'll also protect you from COVID-19 and other contagious diseases as well. Now, follow these health standards always. Those affected with tonsillitis usually get better within uh, a week or maybe two weeks. But sometimes, tonsillitis can be a cause for concern. Dr. Paolo, when should one see their doctor when it comes to tonsillitis? So if the pain is really intractable, when we say intractable, for example, when you experience fever, high-grade fever and pain, you really have difficulty in swallowing. Um, when you swallow even water, you can't tolerate it. There is strictness and mouth opening. Pain when it extends already to the ears, probably, and there's drooling for kids. Some patients would have um, as if there's blockage already in their throat, then probably I think that's the best time to seek um, medical consult, seek medical help. You can also expect your doctor to run a few tests. Dr. Paolo, what are some of these tests man, that our viewers can expect when they first visit you for a tonsillitis consult? We base it clinically. There's really no specific um, guidelines on uh, ito dapat yung gawin. But for additional benefit, we usually require at least request for a complete blood count to check the level of infection. Actually, 
through the CBC, we can check already if it's viral or bacterial in nature. And once your doctor diagnoses what's causing your tonsillitis, then we can discuss treatment. There are also some home remedies that can help alleviate the throat pain in the meantime. Dr. Paolo, what are some of the home remedies that you can uh, advise our viewers to take that is safe in trying to keep the symptoms of tonsillitis uh, at bay? So most of the time, viral infection is self-limiting. So you can actually treat it for the first two to three days. For oral hygiene, you can actually drink a lot of water. You can actually take some teas, put some honey in it. The honey can also has its anti-infecting properties that we can use. Water with saline solution can be of use. And your mouthwash, your typical mouthwash, your povidone iodine solutions, your chlorhexidine mouthwashes can also help. Dr. Paolo, how about if tonsillitis is caused by bacteria as seen when you requested your complete blood count? How will this be treated naman? So for bacterial infection, if it's really a bacterial infection, then probably that's the time we start your antibiotic. So the most common antibiotic that we prescribe um, here in the Philippines is the penicillin-based antibiotic. So penicillin-based, um, yung, yung tawag natin is mga amoxicillin. The most common generic is amoxicillin. You'll be prescribed with it or coamoxiclab is the other one. That's right. And always remember that itong mga antibiotics na to must be prescribed by your doctor. So, kailangan din tapusin ang dose ng antibiotics. Sometimes, uh, we feel better on the third or fourth day, but your doctor prescribed your medicines to be taken for seven days. We must take the full described treatment. Dr. Juliet, explain natin what happens kapag uh, hindi sinunod yung tamang uh, uh, duration ng antibiotic treatment. Okay, ang tawag mo doon is suboptimal treatment. And suboptimal treatment is the most common cause of uh, rheumatic fever. So pag sinabi nilang seven days, it has to be seven days because if you don't complete for seven days, it will induce uh, a lot of antibiotic-resistant antigen. Hindi, hindi nakocover or hindi completely treated. And that will be the base for future uh, complications of rheumatic fever. So actually... How do you know it's bacterial? You know, we endorse that you check and then check for the lymph nodes. If a lymph node is present and you don't have a doctor near you, take the antibiotics but not seven days. To ensure treatment, we recommend 10 days of treatment for all tonsillitis. Because uh, yung untreated, that will be the cause for, uh, no, for rheumatic fever in children and even in adults. Yes, napaka-importante talaga yung time frame of taking the antibiotics. Yes. Do Dr. Juliet, marami rin nang nagtatanong, kapag nakalimutan nila, honestly, nakalimutan nila yung dose nila, maraming iba dyan uh, nag-double dose on the next uh, time, yung iba naman, what should they do? What, what would you advise the viewers to do if they forget a dose of antibiotics? If they forget the dose, then it's okay. Just keep it, then continue with the next one. So ideally, you have 1,500 milligrams per day. If you are unable to take it every eight hours, the earliest time you can take is after four to six hours. So example, nakalimutan nyo and then wake up early in the morning, then you can take the last dose. When does surgery become an option? We'll discuss this after a short break. Our goal here on the program is to keep you on the path to good health. You're watching MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez. This is MedTalk Health Talk, your partner in healthcare. Your tonsils help protect against infections. But if infections keep coming back and result in complications, it might be time to consider surgery as an option. Now, surgery to remove your tonsils is called a tonsillectomy. Dr. Paolo, please tell us when will a tonsillectomy be recommended by a uh, physician? Tonsillectomies are being recommended for, number one, if there is, again, recurrent tonsillitis, if the patient would have three to five times in a year of throat infection, that is an option for the patient already for their tonsils to be removed. Now for kids, if the patient would have current ear infection together with their recurrent um, throat infection, um, adenoidectomy with tonsillectomy is recommended. If your doctor recommends a tonsillectomy, remember, 
It's a procedure that is done uh, fairly frequently, but it is still a major procedure nonetheless. Dr. Paolo, can you explain to our viewers, kapag tinanggal naman ang tonsil sa loob ng bibig, maraming nagsasabi na hihina sila or hindi dapat tatanggalin dahil mas magiging sakitin sila. Is there any truth to this? You can safely remove your tonsils without affecting your immune system at all. We should remember that Aside from your tonsils, you have your, your other lymph nodes as well that makes up your entire lymphatic tissue. So it is safe for us to remove your tonsils without much of that complication. And with that, uh, someone who will need a tonsillectomy will have their heart cleared. Dr. Juliet, bakit importante na maklear ang isang pasyente for tonsillectomy with their heart when malayo naman ito sa, sa bibig, sa tonsils? Anong connection nito? We do a 2D echocardiogram for these patients because with the recurrent tonsillitis, the valves of the heart could have been affected. We have a term echocarditis, wherein there are mild valvular insufficiencies may indicate um, heart affectation into a uh, rheumatic fever, echocarditis. And then, kailangan niya ng prophylaxis after. Another thing is, with chronic tonsillitis, nagkakaroon ng pulmonary hypertension. The pressure in the heart increases. Especially, yung mga those who have chronic uh, tonsillitis, they have uh, snoring and it has created enough or significant obstruction. What we do now is yung sa sleep study to document obstruction. And it's very important. Uh, to do the tonsillectomy to prevent obstruction to the airway. After a tonsillectomy naman, Dr. Paolo, what can a patient uh, expect? Uh, pwede na ba silang kaagad uh, bumalik sa trabaho, back to normal na? Nowadays, because of technology, we have the oblators and the lasers and the cauteries which lessen the pain to the patient and would lessen the amount of time that the patient would um, be admitted. But still, on my personal opinion, I would still let the patient rest and recuperate for at least around seven days then i would then have them cleared for another week so probably at least give them one to two weeks of rest once everything is done the operation the tonsillectomy has been done can the patient expect to have mo uh, any more sore throats in the future when i tell the patients on doing the entire procedure i always tell them that their tonsils removed that you don't have any more infections of the throat now, we usually have other parts of the throat that can still get infected. For example, at the back of your, of your throat, there's what we call the pharynx, and that is called, we call it pharyngitis. But in terms of frequencies of infection, since the most common part of the throat that is commonly infected and that's getting enlarged, the palatine tonsils, we still remove it. So at least if before, mga three to five times in a year, now we can expect at least once a year na lang or once every other year. And that is pretty normal still. Yes, that's very true. And Dr. Julia, kapag ang isang tao ay nag-undergo ng tonsillectomy, how big of a risk is rheumatic heart fever now? So, sabi ni Dr. Paolo, the incidence of uh, tonsillitis is decreased. So, in um, non-susceptible individual, so wala na po siyang ano, decreased ang risk. The important thing is, uh, if the heart got affected before the tonsillitis, merong mga ganon, di ba? They think that since the tonsils have been removed, the heart is safe. So it's important that the heart has been safe before the tonsillitis. Otherwise, if the heart has been affected before the tonsillectomy, then you still have to have a follow-up with your doctor. Ang follow-up na to, we're not talking about one week or seven weeks. The follow-up for the heart which got affected after a tonsillitis is until 18 to 20 years of age. So in children, it has to be stressed that a uh, simple problem of tonsillitis can lead to a chronic uh, problem until they get older. So complete treatment for tonsillitis is the very important uh, prevention. So 7 to 20 days of antibiotic will prevent heart disease in the next uh, adult life. And remember, before anything, talk with your doctor to find the best suitable approach for you. Thank you, cardiologist Dr. Juliet Balderas and ENT head and neck specialist Dr. Paolo Katindig for joining us today. We appreciate your time very much. We're here to help build a healthier future for you. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and thank you for watching MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines.